Don't share box of nation. <laughs> Dante's Box Nation, what's going on, guys? So some more bad news for Teofimo Lopez. As the truth slowly starts to come out and rear its head, it has just been reported that the Lopez versus Cambosis fight will no longer be going down in August. They're postponing the fight again. Now they're adding it to the Oscar De La Hoya card. Oscar De La Hoya's return against Vitor Belfort, which further proves that COVID was not Trilla's concern. Selling tickets was their main concern. Because I had already said to myself, I don't know how they're going to sell this fight unless they have some other main attraction on the card. And the crazy thing is, we don't even know if Teofimo versus Cambosis is going to be the main event or it's going to be the co-main event for the Oscar De La Hoya fight. Trilla right now is praying that Oscar De La Hoya can really, really help this card. But the bad news is they're going up against Canelo Alvarez versus whoever he fights. He's supposed to be fighting against Caleb Plant, but the good news, I guess, on the other hand, is not a whole lot of people really know Caleb Plant. Of course, people are going to tune in because it's Canelo, but it's not a really, really big fight, so maybe that's going to help uh, Teofimo and Trilla as well. So Lopez versus Camposas was supposed to take place last weekend. The problem was there were like five other fights with other networks going on the same week. On top of that, the biggest press conference of the year, uh, Tyson Fury versus Deontay Water for the trilogy was taking place the same week. Trilla's original date had got snatched by Floyd Mayweather so they had to push the fight a week or two further. So Trilla decided to do the smart thing and pull the plug on the fight taking place that weekend. But now they have another dilemma because they're now realizing that T.O. Fimo cannot carry a pay-per-view card alone. So instead, they're going to get a supporting cast, which is once again Oscar De La Hoya. You know, guys, I think this may be a case where Tio Fimo and his father, Sr., they went into that office, that Trilla office, and they sold their ass. They told them, look, man, this is going to be the biggest pay-per-view. I'm a star, man. Oh, yeah, man. I'm the biggest thing since Floyd Mayweather. Oh, man, that $6 million y'all paid on that bid was the smartest business move y'all could have ever made. Tio probably went in there saying all that stuff and had Trilla's eyes wide open. They was like, oh, man, this guy, he could sell a card right here. This man really is the next big superstar. And now here Trilla is canceling events and scrambling in efforts to making their money back. Guys, can you recall any time where there was a fighter that was being promoted as the next pay-per-view star and they had to pull the plug on the event because the fight wasn't selling? They had to drop the tickets so low that the tickets were damn near free. And now they have to just throw this guy on a card with some other big name. Matter of fact, someone who has a bigger name than him to try to probably at least break even. This is not a good look for T.O. Fimo. And T.O. Fimo, he brought this on himself. Honestly, this is the same thing that happened to Gennady Golovkin. This is the same thing HBO did with Gennady Golovkin. HBO, they were looking at the success of Floyd Mayweather being the biggest star in the sport of boxing, right? They looked at Floyd Mayweather and they said, hey man, a lot of people don't even like this guy. Imagine if we got a non-black version of Floyd Mayweather. Everyone would like him. He would be just as big as Floyd Mayweather and everyone would like him, right? This is what they thought when they had Gennady Golovkin. They thought he was going to be the next big cash cow in the sport of boxing because they were gambling on him having the complexion for the protection. But what they didn't take into account is Floyd Mayweather, he had to fight all of the best fighters. He had to fight a ton of guys that were on the pound for pound list. 
Before Floyd Mayweather was 23, he fought better competition than the majority of fighters have fought in their whole career today. And that was before he was 23, right? You got people like ESPN and old media. They're telling T.O. Fimo at age 23, you call the shots. You could fight whoever you want, champ. They're telling him this at age 23. And look at where it's gotten Lopez so far. Like I said, they did the same thing with Gennady Golovkin, did HBO. Because they were listening to all the fans praising this man, Gennady Golovkin. They were really thinking, oh man, this guy is huge. People really like this Gennady Golovkin. So they rushed to throw him on pay-per-view. They put him on pay-per-view against David Lemieux. And it was the biggest mistake that HBO could have made because the pay-per-view completely flopped. It did under 100,000 pay-per-view buys. At least the reports were. Some reports came out first that it did like 90 or 80,000 pay-per-views. Then they had some reports saying it did 125 to 150,000. But it was a failure. It was such a failure that the guy who worked for HBO, who made the decision to put this on pay-per-view, HBO fired him. That's how bad the numbers were. And right now, Trilla has the same dilemma with Teofimo Lopez. But just like Gennady Golovkin had the options to really make himself a star, and that would have been by him fighting tough competition that he did not want to fight. For example, if Gennady Golovkin would have beat Andre Ward, he could have became a superstar in the sport of boxing. But he knew, and we all knew, including old media, there was almost no way he was going to beat Andre Ward. Right? So they thought they could make him a superstar without putting him in the ring with tough competition, and it backfired. Same thing applies to Tio Fimo Lopez. If Tio fights the right guys and he beats them, then he could become a pay-per-view attraction. At least if he beats enough of them. Let's just say, hypothetically, imagine Tio Fimo being good enough to beat Tank Davis and beating Devin Haney back-to-back. He would be huge in the sport of boxing, right? He's got one good win, which is a huge win, over Lomachenko. But Lomachenko himself was never a star. To be a star, not, you have to keep beating some of the best competition. And you really have to beat someone who's well-known. And we all know, at least you guys should know, that Tank Davis and Devin Haney are 10 times more popular than a Lomachenko. These are the guys that T.O. Fimo needs to fight. He's talking about fighting Josh Taylor. He goes from wanting to fight Cambosis. Then he wants to fight Josh Taylor. Then you got his promoter, Bob Arum, saying, oh, you know, he might end up fighting Jose Pedraza next. None of these fights are doing anything for T.O. Fimo Lopez's popularity. So we'll see what happens. Once again, uh, Teofimo Lopez versus Cambosis. It was originally pushed to August 14th. Now it's going to be pushed to September 11th. And once again, I don't know if it's going to be on an undercard, but that's really going to be a horrible look for Teofimo. You go from being on pay-per-view as the main attraction to becoming an undercard fight. Oh, yeah, that would be a bad look. But it's a bad look overall regardless because now they're looking for someone to help T.O. Fimo because apparently they realize he couldn't do it on his own. Let's see how it plays out. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Hello, my name is Dominic. Um, I just got 
my procedure done here at Scout Carolinas. Um, I was recommended by Dante's Boxing Nation and uh, it's real, you know. Here's the, uh, here's the results. Uh, the brother out here, brother Enoch is real and um, it's a very, very, very good recommendation. I recommend it. Um, four hours, you in, you out, and it's the rest of your life. So if anyone in the world wants this hookup, make sure you contact my man Anak at 704-499-3471 and make sure to follow him on Instagram.